in the last tutorial, we talked about how different in the last tutorial, we talked about how to navigate the 3D interface and, and how to manipulate the basics of your brush, the radius and the strength, and how voxels affect the sculpting workflow. Now, before I move on to the individual tools, I'm going to go over some very important feature of 3D Coat, which are the stroke modes, which you'll find up here. If you look on your voxel tools, you'll see this little S curve, and if you hover over it, you will see all these different icons. These are the stroke modes. You can also find them by hitting the E key on your keyboard. They'll pop up right where your mouse cursor is. Now for this tutorial, in the voxel tools, I'm going to be using the build brush, just because it works a little bit better with most of these than the grow brush. I'll explain what in a little bit more detail in the next video, but for now, just use the build brush and I'll just be using this piece of abstract art that we made in the last video. Okay, so what are the different stroke modes and how do they work? Well, they affect how a brush is applied to a model. Now most of them are going to default to this second one, this S-curve where it sort of fades out at both ends. And this is intended to work with a tablet, so if you have one, I highly encourage you to use it as it will greatly increase your effectiveness with many of the tools inside of 3D Coat. So I'll just grab my tablet. My pen. Okay. Now, this one right here, this second one, which is what they all default to, you'll probably be using this a lot. What this one means is that the depth of your brush will be affected by your tablet pressure or your pen pressure, however you refer to it. So if, if I push very lightly here, and you just have to take my word for it that I'm pushing very lightly against my tablet, you see we get a very subtle buildup. Now if I push really hard, we get a very drastic buildup, a little too drastic almost. Let me decrease my strength there a bit. But this is very useful. It means that you have a lot of control over creating very subtle details or adding larger volumes. Now, the next one over from that is where your pen pressure will affect both the strength and the radius of your brush. So if I find a clean section of the model, let me just actually undo all of that. Then you'll see if I push very lightly, the brush is not only very weak, but it's also very narrow. If I push very hard, the brush is very wide and very strong. So let's, this lets me get a very good tapering effect. I just gradually increase my pressure and then gradually decrease it. Then you see we get a nice you get a nice little tapering effect there. Now this one, the uh, droplet pressure and the dot stroke, I don't really use those ever, so I'm not going to go over them, but this one in between, I do use sometimes. It's the constant pressure, and what this means is that your tablet pressure will not affect the radius or the strength of your brush. So as you see, I'm pushing very lightly, but it's still giving me full force and full radius. This is effectively the exact same as if you were using a mouse to do the sculpting instead of a tablet. Now after that we get some things that are a bit more specialized. If we click on this one right here, this little line segment, this lets us draw in lines. This is getting a little hard to demonstrate, but if I make my brush very narrow, I can click, click again, and we have a straight line. And you can just hit escape to break that line. Otherwise, you will just keep drawing in little line segments. <coughs> now, this is affected by your brush radius. So if I make it really big, then you see that uh, 
the stroke is very wide. Now, you can actually, as you see me doing right th here, you can change uh, the radius from one end to the next. So you see, I'm just going to uh, real quickly make a new object here just so this is super clear. Make it very long so we have a wide area to work with. We'll make it a little taller. Okay. If I go back to my line mode, then you'll see I'll start out really wide on one end, and I'll make it really narrow on the other end. And you'll see it starts out wide and it gets a little bit narrower. It's a subtle effect, but it's one that's worth noting. Now the next really important one is this S-curve, the curve stroke. So it's not, it's not this little C curve, it's the S curve. And what this does is it allows you to place some individual points and, and it'll create a curve between them. So you see I've got those points. If I hit escape, then I will have this little parabolic shape here. And if I hit enter, then it draws along that curve. But this curve is not set in stone. If I click and drag, oh, hold up. If I click and drag, actually, if I go here to, if I go to this little box that appears in the upper right hand corner, and I go to edit points, then I can start to move these around. But not only can I move them around, if I right click on them, it'll change the spline interpolation. So you see now, it'll actually run through the points rather than averaging out between them. And if I right click it again, they'll become hard corners. So as you see, now I've got the stroke being applied in these several line segments. I can also go here and I can just hit clear. Now if I click and create some points, you'll see these little blue circles. What those blue circles are telling you is they're telling you the radius of the brush at that point. So if I undo this, and you can change this from point to point. So if I go here, and make the brush really, really narrow, click there, and then make it really, really big again, and click there, and then apply it, you'll see that the brush is very wide, then very narrow, and very wide again. So again, let me just hover over here and clear. And you can also transform this curve. So if I hit apply, and then I go to transform all, I can move this curve, say like up here, and then apply it again, and again. I can even rotate it and apply it again. I can then go to the other side, go to edit points, and I can oops, start to move it. Although I cannot actually change the size of these once they've been placed. But as you'll see, that can be very powerful. Now if I didn't want a line, I could also go, and I'll draw some more points. If I go here, I can tell it to be a closed spline. So this will actually make it a loop. And let me make these a little farther apart. There we go, took a little bit of thinking, but I can apply this in sort of a ring shape. So that particular mode is very powerful. Now the next one on our list actually does something very, very similar. So the next one on our list I don't use very often. It's sort of a uh, stamp. It doesn't really work that well with some of the brushes. The next one on the list I don't use very often, but this one is very impor important. 
and it's basically a stamping mode. So as you see, I can, let me pick a different alpha here. So I'll pick, say, this gear looking alpha. And you'll see that I can just click, drag, and drop. So a very quick way to add some detail that, that way. And this one, it's not dependent on your tablet pressure. It's very dependent on the actual strength of your brush. So let me just uh, create another new surface to work on here real quick. It's just here, make this nice and big. All right. Now the next mode allows you to draw shapes. Now these, all these ones are independent of your alphas. That won't matter what alpha you're using. If I click on this, I can draw a square and you'll see a big square gets extruded out. Let me decrease my strength there. That's the height at which it was extruded at depends greatly on the strength of your brush. I can also drag out just any kind of rectangle or I can just draw any sort of polygon. So I can make odd shapes and as long as I bring it back to the initial point Come on, there we go. I can extrude that shape. Then I can also just, with this next one, I can instead just draw out any old shape. I don't like to use this one that much because it's very imprecise, but these next two aren't. You can draw circles or ellipsoids. And then this one is also very useful. It's very similar to the uh, spline we were just looking at, only this one will just extrude in whatever shape you happen to draw with it. And it's very powerful because I can go in here and I can make these corners, and, but leave these as smooth curves and extrude it. And then I can make small, small edits to it and extrude again, or I can transform it. But this one always has to be a closed spline. So those are the different stroke modes. Those will greatly change the way that you uh, use all of these different brushes. But in the next video, I will start to go over these, this first batch of voxel tools.